Amen. Please be seated. The title of our message this evening is Change Yourself and Change Your World. Change Yourself and Change Your World. In other words, when you change yourself, you'll be able to change your world. You know, we're just discussing in the men's meeting that this life it's simple. If you live it in accordance with your word of God and with principles, the life is meant to be lived with continuous progress in the midst of changes in all aspects of life. That is, as you live this life, you will see changes. But as you are living the life, the way God designed it is that you will be having continuous progress. Because if you look at the whole of human history, progress is dependent on knowledge. And as you grow older, if you are living the life correctly, you will have more experience, you will have more knowledge, you will have more opportunities, you will earn more, you will have more spiritual experiences, and your life is supposed to be a life of continuous progress. And you know, in this church, we have always talked about progress in three, in four aspects of life. Progress spiritually. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, you are a young Christian. You are a baby Christian. You are expected to go through a process of continuous progress in your spiritual life. The Bible says you will grow in grace as you study the word, as you pray, as you witness, and as you hear more from God, as you even make mistakes, you will grow spiritually. The same way, you are expected to grow politically. You know, we have seen, at least some of us who are old enough, we have seen political parties in the First Republic, UPN, NPN, I mean, the First Republic, no, we're not, I'm not old enough in the First Republic. First Republic was where you have Northern People's Congress, you know, uh, PRP, no, not PRP, NEPU, Northern People's Congress, NEPU, and uh, Action Group. And in the Second Republic was when we have, well, at that time we were at least children, we, we knew something at that time. We had UPN, we have NPN, we have all those parties. And then the military came. And when the military came, what happened? People hailed the military. Today, if military come anywhere, do they see hail them? No, because we've so we've known, we've grown politically to know that the best military regime is worse than the worst civilian regime. We've known, we've seen. We've even seen different political parties. That now, for many people, there's even no difference. We've also seen how individuals within the system can make some difference. So, politically, we need to mature, grow politically. Economically, the way 
Life is patterned. The way God desires it is that you grow. You know, the Bible tells us in Proverbs uh, 13, 11 that dishonest wealth dwindles away. But he who gathers little by little makes it grow. So the way the world is, you know, structured is that you will be growing economically. When you just started work, you can't hope to earn the same thing as somebody who has been working for 20 years. So you grow socially. You are expected to climb the social ladder as you walk, as you have network with other people. Your circle of friends is supposed to be increasing on a yearly basis such that the network you have today, this year, should be larger than your network last year. That is how the life is structured. That is the only way that you can fulfill destiny. Because destiny is only fulfilled when progress is made in the right direction. But if you don't make progress in these areas, then you cannot grow. But you know, we live in a world that can easily mold us into its image. The pull in the world today is so strong. The world is controlling fashion. The world is controlling education. The world, in fact, there is hardly any bridal wedding dress today that you will go to the shop to buy that is ready-made that will not show the breast. There's none. Unless you will say, look, I want modification. The way the world is structured today, if we are not careful, it will easily mold us into his image. Today, it is difficult to see the difference between the holy and the profane. It is difficult in many places to see the difference between corruption and smartness in the worldly understanding. So, what do we see? If we are not careful, we live in a world that can easily mold us into his image. And we are not careful, we will walk, talk, and live like everyone else in the world. So you are a Christian, but you will walk, you will talk, and live like everyone else. So there will be no difference between believers and unbelievers. By the time we do that, if we live, if we walk, if we talk, if we act and live like everyone else in the world, then our claim to Christianity is doubtful. Because a Christian is somebody who is different. A Christian is a follower of Jesus Christ. The first Christians were noticed as Christians because they were different. Their behavior was different. The way we were doing things were different. So as Christians, we must do things in different ways. And for us to do things in different ways, you need to first of all change yourself. And if you have changed yourself, you'll be able to change the world as you make continuous progress in life. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. 1 Peter chapter 2, 
verse 11 to 12. He says, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. You see, you see, as foreigners and aliens, we are foreigners in this world. We are aliens in this world. This world is not our permanent abode. Our permanent abode is heaven. We are here temporarily. So the way we behave, we cannot behave like people who think that the world ends here. We have another world after this. So he says, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires. This is where people who say they are 100% grace don't want to hear. But the Bible cannot be faulted. He says, abstain. What does that mean? You should run away from. You should avoid. Avoid sinful desires. He said, which wage war against your soul. So, these sinful desires, they are going to be there. Remember our message on the heart. The Adamic heart. Which the Bible says is continuously evil. Continually wicked. But the Bible is saying abstain from it. Because it's waging war against our soul. If you don't abstain from it, it will destroy your soul. He said abstain from civil desire which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans. Hello? We are not of the world, but we live in the world. We are going to live among who? Pagans. He said, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. So are they going to accuse you? Yes. They will accuse you. He said, but let your good life, you know, be so much that when they accuse you, as one other Bible tells us, verse tells us, is that they will find you blameless. And I pray that the almighty God will help each and every one of us to do this in Jesus' name. So how do you change yourself and your world? Number one, you need to change your mindset. You know, change your mindset. If you have a satanic mindset, then you need the entrance of the Holy Spirit to enable you to change your mindset. The beginning point of any change is the mindset. In Romans chapter 12 verse 2, Romans chapter 12 verse 2, the Bible says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. This world has a pattern. This world has a pattern of doing business. This world has a pattern of worship, of religion. This world has a pattern of dressing. This world has a pattern of behavior. But he says, if you are a Christian, do not want conform to the pattern of this world. So, know the pattern of this world and do the opposite. We as Christians, we are non-conformists. We are not expected to conform to the pattern of this world. And the only way you cannot be conformed to the pattern of this world is to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's only then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So, when you do not conform to this world, when you tra transform by the renewing of your mind, you will know the will of God. And we're able to do God's will. And for us as Christians, God's will is more important than man's approval. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. The Bible says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So, do you see? When they want to destroy you, they will bring arguments that is what? Against the knowledge of God. When you want to attack the people of God, there are two ways to do it. First, you attack what God represents. And then you attack the people to make them see hardship. Once you do those two things, you have destroyed the people. But the beginning point is the knowledge of God. You know, they will bring arguments and pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So once that is done, you are finished. That is why the Bible says we must take captive every thought to make it obedient to God. Once you make every thought of yours obedient to God, obedient to the word of God, in accordance with the word of God, then you have changed yourself. And when you have changed yourself, you can change the world. So the battleground is the heart, is the thought. Once they get your mind, get your thinking, you know, every other thing will follow. The second thing you need to do to change yourself is to change your conduct. To change your conduct. It is only after changing your mind that you can change your conduct. Otherwise, you become a Pharisee. I think we should read that passage. Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. Matthew 23, 27. Can you give us that passage? Matthew 23, 27. Matthew 23, 27. He said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within, full of dead men's bone and of all uncleanness. What we are saying here is that if you don't change your conduct, you'll be like what? A Pharisee. What is the characteristics of the Pharisees? They clean outside. But the inside is what? It's dirty. So their thoughts are dirty. Their discussions are dirty. But on Sunday, they will learn eh? come to church, and even preach to people. If you don't change your conduct, you are like the Pharisee. And we know that good conduct is a necessity for Christian life. That's why First Peter 2 verse 12 says, live such good lives among pagans. That though they may accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds. Do you have good deeds? Do people see it? Because one thing is for you to think that you have good deeds. But the second is that it must be seen. So good conduct for a Christian is a necessity because... We are strangers and aliens. We are strangers and aliens in this world. This world is not our home. Heaven is our home. Secondly, fleshly desires are not good for our soul. Like the passage we read, it said, it wars against our soul. It destroys our soul. And then finally, we are meant to influence the world as salt 
As Christians, we cannot live our life. We cannot adjust our life to the pattern of this world. The world should adjust their life to our own pattern. And that is why you need to change your world. And how do you change your world? You change your world through your faith and action. Your good deeds, the good deeds we have been talking about, will bear witness to the glory of God. Your good lives and heart should convict the lost of their sins. And then the lost will become converted and glorify God. Our conduct should not be such that people will say, if this way you behave, that is what Christianity is, I will not come to your church. No. Our conduct should be one that should draw people to God. And as Christians, the only way we can change the world is by taking social action to change the world as salt and light. Matthew chapter 5, from verse 13 to 16. Matthew chapter 5, from verse 13 to 16. The Bible says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled upon by men. Verse 14. Verse 14 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bar. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Are you seeing the emphasis on good deeds? They may see your good deeds. So we have talked several times about the functions of the salt as a preservative. The functions of the salt, when you don't put salt in soup, is tasteless. So, and we have talked about the power of light. When light comes, darkness disappears. And darkness cannot comprehend it. When we say a Christian should be a salt and light, it means that we should influence the world and change it. We should influence the world and change it. We change the pattern of the world to become in accordance with what God wants. It's not for us to adopt the worldly standards and follow the worldly standards. It's for us to be sought and light and influence the world to godliness and influence the world to righteousness, and influence the world to holiness. That's why our major role uh, in the ministry of reconciliation is to persuade men. Is to persuade men. That's why in most cases, I tell people not to engage in useless argument with anybody. Know what you believe. And persuade men by your faith and by your action. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, 5, verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. The Bible says, since then we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. What we are is plain to God. And I hope it's also plain to your conscience. I pray that... The Almighty God will make it possible for us to play our role in changing the world in Jesus' name. So, I ask you, is there a significant change in your life since you gave your life to Jesus? Do you walk, talk, and live as a Christian? Is your conduct in line with the scriptures? Are you changing your world? Are you experiencing 
continuous progress. You know, God created you to have a consistent and continuous progress. When you give your life to Jesus, you are changed completely. But for the change to be effective, you have to change your mindset and change your conduct. Then you will be positioned to change your world. I don't know what you are feeling. I don't know the challenges you are facing. But God created you. And when you give your life to Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God has changed you completely. You are meant to live a life of continuous progress and change your world. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because of your word that has come forth. As we leave, we ask God that you help us to change our world to your honor and glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.